They aren't necessarily a musical family. <laughs> well, my daughter is. I, I, I can't say that I'm very musical, but my oldest daughter is very musical. But Jennifer Quartz finds comfort in the songs her daughter sends from school. I often, more than she knows, <laughs> play them over and over in my with my headphones on when I'm out walking. This story is about Jennifer's journey. I wouldn't be truthful to you or anybody else if I didn't say I was sad. And maybe a little mad, but mostly sad. It began two years ago with this red spot on her left breast. So I went and got a mammogram and it came back normal. Everything looked fine. No lumps, no tumor. Her blood work was okay, and doctors dismissed it. I was told crazy enough that my bra was too small. But it did not go away. So one night, Jennifer Googled her symptoms. IBC came up, inflammatory breast cancer. It was the first thing that popped up. And it was late at night, everybody was asleep, and I was terrified. I just had a bad feeling. A biopsy confirmed what a mammogram could not. I remember him saying inflammatory breast cancer, and all I could think about was what I Googled. <laughs> because what I Googled said that everybody dies, that nobody survives. And so I knew my fate right then. <laughs> So, we're doing another PET scan on you. Okay. Despite the diagnosis, Jennifer is getting treated at Baylor Scott & White. Have you had any pain? Recently? A little bit. Okay, yeah. where, where at? Uh, middle of my spine. And how long have you had that pain? <sighs> About a week. Okay. You okay? I'm just yeah. scared for it. But... I understand. You sure you don't want to stop for a minute? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm fine. Just want to straighten it out a little bit. There we go. Little stick, sweetie. Doctors cannot stop her inflammatory breast cancer. All done. I'll be right back. Okay. But they can yeah. slow it down. The doctors gave us three to five years, and that was a year and a half ago. So, a year ago. So, we're hoping for five, all right? <laughs> all right. You have everything? Yeah. All right, right this way. Every three months, anxiety sets in when Jennifer must be here for a scan to see if the cancer is spreading. Just go ahead and put those straight above your head for me. Not too tight. Okay. So we're still breathing on. We'll see you in a little bit, okay? While her husband, Rob, sits outside in a waiting room. You're trying to stay positive and strong for the kids and the wife, but I cry every day. I wish you luck. God bless. Take Thank care. you. We go around the corner here to the left. Okay. It will take another week to learn the results. Everything's going to be fine, Mom. You've got to stay positive, okay? Yeah. You've got to bite. Right? It's okay. Here's the thing. Uh, this is so rare that many gynecologists and um, primary care providers they don't see this stuff. They don't see it, so they don't, they'll come up with every excuse that it's something else than what it is. So this is how it goes undetected. Like many similar patients, Jennifer's treatment is as much mental as it is medical. She sees Dr. Shannon Papito, a clinical psychologist, every other week. She's carrying around with her every day the awareness that she will die from this cancer. <laughs> it is a reality. Her daughter, Daisy, does not know. But I don't think it's fair. She's just a little kid. Huh? What do you feel like eating? Hmm? Hey, Kitty. McDonald's? 
Jennifer's life is now about making memories. We could cross here. They're planning an Alaskan cruise. She met her sister in Las Vegas for a Celine Dion concert and took her daughter Daisy to see the beach for the first time. I really want this to educate. I really want someone to go, oh my gosh, I have redness in my breast. I better go, I better push past the mammogram and ask for some more tests. This story, this warning to women, she wants it to be her legacy. I'm not necessarily afraid to die, but I'm very afraid to say goodbye. One fear she never expected to face. Jason Whiteley, Channel 8 News.